three, two, one. And we're live. Welcome back to ABC News. (laughs) Can you imagine Imagine. if we were on ABC News, they would hate us. God, we would not provide any valuable information to the world. We'd probably give (laughs) fucking more than they are. Right. Just saying. We'd we'd at least be honest. True. But who asked? Anyway. (laughs) This is not ABC News. God bless. This is. Advice podcast. Yeah. You will learn more here, though, I think. Yeah. I think you'll learn about cool things. That's true. And like, look at my new lip gloss and stuff. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I got a new road. If you guys are wondering what's in my hand. How this do you is, like the, like, let me see. Give, let me get a good ribbon. look. I kind of put a light amount. Okay. I yeah. just did it for like hydration. Do you notice more so when you line your lips, you get more of the pigment? Cause like lining What's, the lips. Do you notice the difference between that and the in the clear? Yeah. Yes. Cause so I have you know my little dark spot on my lip. Yeah. It's, it's lighter it? when I wear this. Oh, interesting. Can you tell? I can't tell, but I also like you right. would know more than I. It's a lot pinker. Like my lips when I don't have anything on my lips, my lips are kind of like dull. Like I feel like they just kind of like flush to my like skin. More of a yeah. This I mean like they're not dull right now. They're like yeah. They, it gives it pink warmth i like it I like the pink yeah still waiting for my case i think i'm a summer fridays girly i got a summer fridays i got the vanilla one i think and i really like it i have this mauve like revlon lip liner that i've had for, for years. years so long i literally i get it at cvs it's so good and it's the perfect liner i'm wearing it right now and then i got the vanilla summer fridays to layer on top and it's my all-time favorite combo it's I've a good, ever like, done. like everyday combo. Yep. It goes natural. Like it, you can wear it with a chill outfit like you have on right now. Or you can wear it with like a done up. F- full glam and everything. Yeah. I was doing good. like full brown for a minute. I had a MAC brown liner and then I was doing like a clear on top. And it, I don't know. I just don't like it as much anymore for some reason. I was doing it during like fall, winter and I yeah. liked it. I think it's just because it's. Maybe oh, seasonally. Oh, that's I just why. fully put my wet lips oh. <laughs> all over this mic gross yeah and these are all linty and yeah. stuff i have makeup on my my, my mic oh gross did you watch the um ariana zach saying the second part no well during it she like she kind of does this while she's talking oh and she's wearing red lipstick so like halfway through the interview she has like a red blotch on her did they not chin. stop her they did okay. yeah and they, they keep it into like her makeup artist comes in and like touches cute. her up and she's like oh my god i'm so embarrassed like it Aww. it was very cute but yeah it, yeah she because she kept doing that and yeah. it started getting habit lit. that's i have like a thin line on the rim of my mic of just, oh, just makeup. chin makeup yep yeah i have it a little bit too because I, I rest here like while if you're reading an entry and i'm like oh really? processing it i'll be like oh huh, like and i'll just kind of i never mine's never intentional i never like intentionally set but you know what's crazy is i don't care about my chin makeup because when i'm brushing my teeth mm. i brush my teeth after i do my makeup and it it's, goes away. It my chin makeup goes away, or like the corners of my mouth, like that makeup. I have to like dab out afterwards because it yeah. literally has like a blotch from brushing my teeth. Right, I get a, I get streaks. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> vampire. Yeah, <laughs> Snake bites. I do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I do that too. Like, why don't we just brush our teeth before? Yeah, sometimes I do, but then a lot of the times I'm like either just I like my the coffee, fresh or... feeling right before I leave the house. Me too. Me like, too. I want it to be. Makeup, brush teeth, give Link a B O N E. Sorry, I don't want her to perk up. Um, and then leave. Like yeah. I, I like that order of things. I do makeup, brush teeth, lip product, and then I'm out. Right. Yeah, that's that's yeah. in there too. I, or I'll do my lip product in the elevator because we have mirrors oh, really? in our elevator. Like I feel like I always end up touching up there a little bit. I have a. I've got a shaky hand. I can't do that. <laughs> to be. Whoa, I need to be still. <laughs> in the elevator too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's funny we should kiss the elevator and leave our mark what part the of oh, the mirror they clean that shit it's i really clean it's in our elevators. constantly clean i actually noticed one time i was on my way down and there was a handprint on the elevator door mm-hmm. and i was like oh wow like i've never seen any kind of smudge in here i think i did like a quick errand and then i came back rode the same elevator up and it was gone clean yeah, yeah. and i don't see them cleaning it no I think they, they only they probably do it when they're on their way up to the office. Yeah, I think they constantly have like a, a rag on their back pocket. Yeah, that's smart. and 
yeah, they're constantly going up and down. So they're just like, whoa, whipping yeah. it out. Yeah, those grubby little kids in our building touching shit. God, wash your hands. It's disgusting. <laughs> got something on your tongue? I just got all Cat the- got your tongue? <laughs> the like. All the fluff? Yeah. I hate putting on lip gloss and then going out on a windy day. It's the fucking worst. Oh my God, yeah, it's miserable. It's the worst. We are officially on season eight of Vanderpump. Again, please no spoilers. I don't know anything of the present day. I don't even know what Scandaval is. I just know the term and I know it obviously involves Tom Scandaval. I just have to preface this every time. Tom (laughs) Scandaval. Yeah, honestly. Uh, So you guys don't freaking spoil anything for me because I know nothing. But we are on season eight. We've been jamming through. We watched basically a whole season yesterday. Like a half a season. Yeah, we... Literally laid on the couch all day yesterday. Yeah, it was it was lovely. But um yeah, so season eight, Jackson and Brittany are about to get married. We're at their bachelorette right now, which is great. Like I, I love this storyline, but there's new people this season because now that Tom Tom's open, they've brought in Max, Brett, Dana. Um, there's I'm still learning names, but just new people, new workers that like bounce back and forth from Sir to Tom Tom. And I don't like it. Yeah. It I just don't like kind new of, people. It, it feels like newbies that you just don't want around. I'm like, <laughs> they came on screen. I was like, who, who are, are you? you? Like, it feels like and you're only like, here because you want to get famous. And they're too comfortable too quick. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you didn't have to go through the trenches like everybody exactly. else Exactly. They all started when they were literally eating ramen every day because they couldn't they afford anything. Broke. Yes, they couldn't afford anything else. But these people are coming on, like, basically knowing it's a first class ticket to fame. Mm-hmm. And it's, I just don't it's, respect it. Yeah. It's a different, it's just a different vibe. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. It Honestly, the seasons as they progress are more and more such a different vibe because like we were saying in the earlier seasons, they really are broke. They are these aspiring actors that are just working at this like West Hollywood restaurant. And then as the narrative progresses and they're obviously gaining fame over the years, they're, they slowly are slipping in like, hmm, you're wearing a Cartier Love bracelet right. oh now you're driving a bmw oh you just bought a house in studio city like but, but they still try to front like they're broke yeah they make it sound so like normal and nonchalant when their houses are probably like 1.3 mil each yeah at least and it's it's you could tell it's just such a fake narrative yeah which and it's is kind of annoying you know what i was actually thinking remember how you would ask me you knew you know one thing that is true of today and you would you had said but we'll see it. I actually don't oh. know if we will. We oh. very well could. Like I said, I haven't watched these past few seasons. But they do take a break for COVID. Oh. So a lot of things happen 2020, 2021 when I don't think they filmed. Oh. I think there's a break. Okay, I so think. a lot of shit probably goes down. Yeah, because if Naturally. this... What we're watching is season eight and it's 2019, right? Uh, Yeah, I think so. 20, it might be 2018. No, it's 2019 because remember last season, Jax was 39. Now he's 40 and, and he's, he's 44, 44 right, right now. now. You're right. So it was 2019 and but there's only two seasons. He's 44 right now, but his birthday's in July. July. So, he's so, turning 20. Pro- so he's turning 45 this year. So he's probably, it's probably 2018. 18? Yeah. It's probably like summer of 2018. He's probably about to turn 41. Sure. Yeah. But I do think there's a break for COVID. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd hope. Yeah. Could you imagine they're still filming during COVID? <laughs> I mean. nobody's, But nobody was going to the restaurant. Let me look it up. Or maybe they follow their personal lives. Yeah. Well, no, but there was a period of shutdown where SAG literally didn't let anybody film. Like production was a no. Right. And for Bravo especially, I would think they'd be like the first to be shut down. I mean, they can't be going under the radar. Well, who knows? These big wigs like paying off shit. Okay, so I think this was filmed 2019 because season eight premiered 2020. Okay. So it... Oh, they... Oh, I guess, duh. Because it happened before. Yeah, I was going to say it's delayed, but like, duh. They're yeah. Not, these aren't live. And <laughs> season nine, it skips two years. Season nine oh, wow. premieres 2022. Whoa. So it skips two years. And I know of a lot of things that happen. During the years or during this that season that they come back? I don't know that, Got but it. I know a lot of things that has have happened since COVID specifically. Okay. So I don't know if it falls in that two year gap or uh, I think it falls in the gap. I think it falls in the gap. Well, I hope we have footage. 
I don't know. Maybe we're going to, maybe they told them to like record stuff. Yeah. Yeah, probably. And we're going to see footage of. They were even doing that in the early se- earlier seasons when they'd go to like Cabo and shit. I could tell they were recording on their phone and they would right. upload it into the actual episode. Yeah. Oh, I just want to get through season eight. I'm so like. Ugh, You're so anti. So <laughs> anti season eight right now. And I don't know. I'm just pushing through. I My friend Rowan, she had fully got me into the show. Like she was the one who was like, you need to watch it. You need to watch it. So I text her every time I like like or dislike something really intense just to like give my two cents and I told her episode one I was like do I have to watch this season she was like it's she said welcome to the worst season oh. Sheena is the most pick me ever um she named just like a couple more people that kind of suck throughout the season and she was like but you need to watch it because there's actually something really crazy that Jax does or says to Lisa and Jax really starts to fall apart in the season, which Ugh. makes me so sad because I feel like last season he was doing we so loved well. Jax. We loved Jax. Which I thought season. would never come out of my mouth because I hated him one through seven. Six, six, right. Season seven, I feel like he pulled it together. Like, obviously, all the shit that happened with um, Brittany. Faith. Oh, Faith. So, yeah, Faith. That was like the last of it, hopefully. Hopefully, again. I don't know anything, so don't spoil. And then his father passed away and it seemed like it, you know, very sadly shook his world, but I'm glad he like actually values Brittany now. Right. I hope it's sustainable again. Please don't spoil it. Um, but yeah. And then now to hear that he's about to pop off on Lisa on some disrespectful shit. She says, how'd she word it? She says like the most heinous thing to Lisa. I said, no, Jax was doing so well last season. And she said, oh yes, he gets scary. Ugh. So for her to say he gets scary, I'm like, I thought I already saw scary Jax. Right. If he gets, I'm terrified. If he gets worse, I'm terrified. Ugh. I have to yeah. admit something. I don't, what? You look something up. No, Jax oh. was in my dream last night. Oh, really? <laughs> in a good form? Like, what uh, was it about? Or you just like I just remember seeing him. Okay. Yeah. Huh. He's just, they're, they're watching into my much. dreams. Yeah. <laughs> so We're watching it a lot. That happened to me when I watched Gossip Girl for the yeah. first time. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay, Kristen. Just, just dreaming. Just a little baby. Just, a baby. just sleeping with a little baby and Jax in my dream. <laughs> Jax is <laughs> rocking me to sleep. Jason. Jason. What's his real last name? Ch- 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 something. Like C-H something, I think. Christ. Basically. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Goes Those J Jax. names, man. <laughs> Holy fuck, that was good. <laughs> oh my god. That was god, really that good. Was I had to so admit. good. That was so good. Oh, my boyfriend just texted me and he said, I updated our Sunday date notes. And we have this like ongoing shared note of all the like dates that That's we plan. So cool. You'll be able to always look back on it. Yeah. And uh I'm gonna Oh, he put a screenshot of the map. I'm dead. Oh my god. He, he knows you so well. <laughs> really he found um this really cool wine and he said it's called a sip and play oh it's called sip and play oh um and you go and you drink wine and you play chess and like other board games so cool and it's in brooklyn and then down the street after we're going to an improv comedy show oh my god i love improv improv is it's either the worst or the best but either way it's it's so fun to watch even if it's bad like it's so, it's so funny. funny. Yeah. It's so good. Oh, that's yeah, I'm excited. So he wrote out so many notes. God, he really gets me. What time are you guys going? Um, It looks like <laughs> he said we should land at around 530 at Sip and Play. You got a PJ? I was. You taking a PJ to Brooklyn? No, I'm not Lala. <laughs> that's, a, that's another <laughs> thing. I really do like Lala. I do. But like, she's kind of crazy. Yeah. But she owns it. It works because she knows she's crazy. Yeah. And she's, she's, she's I just. She's fiery. I you, wouldn't say she's crazy. She's you, fiery though. Right. And you just can't fault people who are consistent. Yeah. She has been. She owns the, it. Yeah. yeah. She's been the same Lala that we met season, what, three, three or, or four? four? Something like that. Yeah. She's the same Lala. Yeah. I love it. That's one storyline I do know about though since mm. my, so my old trainer is lala's current trainer so i so i see on her stories like like i think lala's pregnant right now again like and she already oh, has I didn't a know kid that. yeah like it, she's pregnant i think so i think so 
I should probably check before we blabber that around to our millions of listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's pregnant. Who's the dad? I don't know that. I don't know. So maybe we should not like look it up or anything. Maybe yeah. that's like part of the story. I don't know. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just skip ahead. <laughs> skip ahead. It's okay. Close your ears. Yeah. And then her other baby turned three. So ocean ocean yeah so i know like her storyline but it seems like that's not a big spoiler i'm just i just need to know what fucking scandal is so bad you're it's actually insane krista you don't think i'll be able to predict it i don't know because i don't know the footage that surrounds it Mm. i just know what happened Mm. so like you didn't you didn't watch it no Mm. i just know like the basic facts headlines of the situation yeah but i don't know how they roll out the drama on tv so oh my god we yeah have, we, we need to watch it in two times speed okay no i do a lot to my brain <laughs> yeah, then i'd really dream about it <laughs> i think that would send me into a spiral yeah i feel like i'd be, like yeah with this much coffee okay it's a big coffee mm-hmm. i've been getting this coffee from this bagel spot um, that I like round randomly found on DoorDash the other day and it's five bucks and it's this big ass cup of iced coffee and they just have the best vanilla syrup. It's actually like better than Alfred. Oh my God. It's so good. And I do extra ice and I've gotten it the past two days in a row. I got it one time last week and I'm just fucking obsessed, but it can I swig. It's crazy. I, I take like one sip tax every time you <laughs> yeah. order, order it. I have lip stuff on. That's okay. I do too. Okay. I don't care. Oh, it's candy. Candy. It's so funny. <laughs> it's I love vanilla and iced coffee without milk. Me too. Me too. Because you don't need it. You don't need to double up. It's delicious. It's so good. Ooh, I feel <laughs> geeked. <laughs> yeah, I've been super energetic. Like, I feel like it's doing a lot. <gasps> I've not been handling caffeine, guys. No. I'm off. I, this is what I do. I like, oh, I think I can do it again. And I do it for like a month, maybe even two months. And then my body's like <gasps> shutting down. Shut down. Yeah. Abort mission. I really only, I've been good with caffeine, but I can't drink it on days that I go to a nail salon. <laughs> Valid. And only nail salons yeah. for some reason. I mean, yeah, you're literally sitting there. Someone's holding your hands so you can't move. Yeah. I don't like nail salons either. No. I get it. They do something to my anxiety real bad. And especially when I'm caffeinated up. Yep. I need to be like you need even when I'm sitting here working, I'm still like exerting, up, do the, a lap, like right, go to the kitchen, and quick. I'm like releasing the energy that the caffeine gives me. But if I drink a coffee, there's been a couple times where I got a coffee on the way, like on my walk to yep. the nail salon, and I have a full blown panic attack mm-hmm. when I'm getting my nails done because the caffeine hits while I'm sitting there. Yeah, it's really scary. I know. I've I've disliked nail salons ever since middle school I was getting my nails done and the um the manicurist had hair dye in her hair like boxed hair dye in her hair and there's no windows open so I started getting really lightheaded from the fumes and mind you this is like 2008 so I'm getting acrylic I'm getting like OG acrylic so that's already strong fumes and then the hair dye so I look over to my friend Carly and I was like, I don't really feel so good. She's like, maybe step outside real quick. I was like, yeah, like, I don't know. I just feel like lightheaded. So she stops, which I was already so nervous to tell her to stop because acrylic, you got to work fast. Yeah. It's like going to start It'll dry. Yeah. And I went outside and I don't remember the rest of the story, but Carly said like, so glass windows were like the outside of the nail salon. And she said my back was against it. And all of a sudden I just boom. I just drop like my knees just like break and I just slide down the glass and I just like am passed out outside of this. You could have got a check. I know. You could have got a check, Kristen. I know. I know. Should have, could have, would have, but. Because it's one thing for you to like have a reaction to the natural fumes that are occurring in a nail salon. Black hair dye. But like, don't, what are you doing? No windows open. Hair dye, boxed hair dye too, which is like probably all the And where are you dyeing your hair at work? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then, the, yeah. And I, I told her like I was feeling woozy. She's like, oh, do you need some water? And I was like, I don't know. I think I just need some air. Like open the window. There's literally no oxygen in the air. Mm-mm. This is Lily Nails too. So you- It's small. You know the layout of that yes. place. It's only the front door. They don't have like, there's no, no. windows in the salon. No. Lily Nail off, what is that? Gregory. Yeah, Gregory and is that- uh, Pleasant Hill Road. I think that's Gregory. Gregory and Pleasant Hill Road, maybe. Something. It's next to like Wences, if you're familiar with the area. Across from Safeway. Yeah, Safeway. 
Um, what else Ooh, is over there? Kobe Japan. Is, right? Wences. Kobe Japan's in that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. I miss Wences. They gave me a free pedicure. Wow. Hey, you got your buck. You know, you know what color I got? This is how you knew. You just how you know I was in the right headspace. Purple. Mint. Ew. Like a mint green. <laughs> Not even a mint green. I take that back. Like, like turquoise mint? Eh? No, like the soup that they eat in Princess Diaries. Ew. That green. And that's not even a U color. I, I was recovering from <laughs> head trauma. Literally <laughs> passing out. I was like, no one. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I think they were scared that I was going to sue. Sue. You should have. That seems like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. And we loved Lily. Yeah. No, it, you know what? It's okay. Right. Hopefully they learn from it and nobody else ever passes out there right. ever again. <laughs> I freaking know. Comment down below if you pass out a nail, <laughs> Lily Nail Swan. <laughs> no, we have a case. <laughs> We're going to get a settlement. Free pedicures for life. Oh. But green only. But you have to go to Concord. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Oh, shit. Sorry, I just dropped the deck of decks. Yet again. Please excuse me. Please excuse me, dear Aunt Sally. <laughs> and now we'll go to our segment about PEMDAS. <laughs> Okay, enough about whatever Us. the hell we talk about. <laughs> I don't know what this podcast is about. Um, this week, or this, yeah, this week, last month, or la- hello, this is Advice. Over. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm Kristen, this is Alex. And the last week of every month, we do a general advice column. And you guys wrote into advicepodcast at gmail.com. So if you didn't get it in this episode or you want to get it, for like the last episode of April, send it to that email. Um, we got a lot of entries though. And a lot of you guys kill it with the subject mm. lines. And I'm telling you, that's how, that is how we pick like old seasons. We used to like screenshot and pick in advance and like read and come and reread it again, but it didn't feel genuine rereading and like having had our reaction already. Right. So we do not read these before we solely do go off the subject lines. So yeah, that's how you, you grab are, our attention. You guys are getting really good at this. Yeah. There's some crazy ones. You want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. Okay, this one's called 10 Years of Friendship Ends After an Ultimatum. Hmm. Hi, ladies. I love you guys so much. You remind me of myself and my childhood best friend going on 24 years as besties. If you ever read this on the pod, please don't disclose my name. It's a little long and I apologize. The names in the story are already made up. I have a friend from college, Tim, who I've been friends with for 10 years now. We share an extremely close group of group and even going into our 30s all living in different states we all make time for each other i love my friends with my whole heart i'm the quote mom of the group tim moved five minutes from me a little over a year ago so we got even closer i've been single for going on six years now after a tough breakup with an alcoholic then covid hit then new jobs take up my life so dating hasn't been very successful to say the least in august i finally met someone john I vibed with and thought it was great because he was a childhood friend of Tim's. I love meeting people organically. We had all been friends and hanging out for months before I considered, quote, talking to John. Turns out we had great chemistry and we started casually dating. Then it started to get weird. Tim has a girlfriend, which makes his behavior even weirder. In September, Tim threw a hissy fit after a night of drinking and was telling John to drive them home while drunk. I made beds in my apartment for them both. The plan was always to all stay at my apartment. John said no to Tim. He's staying. Tim wouldn't let me call him an Uber, but also wouldn't come back inside to hang out with us. It was a two-hour battle with a drunk man acting like a toddler. In October, then, unrelated to the hissy fit, John and Tim got into another fight, which had nothing to do with me, but Tim dragged me into it saying, I don't know what she sees in you. She's going to leave when she finds out who you really are. This left a dark mark on a blooming relationship between John and I. In December, my 30th birthday was a few weeks away. When I asked him if he was coming, he gave me an ultimatum. Either him or John goes. So to defend my peace, I told him if he's going or if he's giving me an ultimatum, he's not welcome at my huge milestone birthday. I feared he would make the night about himself which is why i made that choice tim stopped answering me in the middle of our argument turns out that john didn't even come to my party either because we broke things off due to the reactions from tim over the previous months i was more upset about the fight with a friend than losing john but i didn't do anything to deserve this treatment tim had told someone else in the group i hope she 
can forgive me one day. To me, that felt like he was remorseful. In February, I didn't want to be the bigger person, but I was, and I reached out to him recently to make to meet up for a talk. I got ignored. I know he's just being stubborn and his ego is massive. He has never apologized for anything. I've decided I don't want this toxic person in my life, but we will see each other again soon. I don't know how to approach the situation when we come face to face. I want to tell him off and don't want my other friends to ever feel uncomfortable. How would you react seeing this, quote, friend again? Thanks for reading if you got this far. Best. And then name redacted. (laughs) (laughs) This feels like a Vanderpump situation. I was thinking, (laughs) why was my head like in a Vanderpump episode while reading this? I mean, the 30th birthday, like that was a thing during this. is not going to do this right now this is your real life or sorry that was disrespectful but it did remind me right of that and it honestly it does sound like there is a lot of i hate like jumping to this but it does sound like there's a lot of jealousy coming from tim's side mm-hmm. like why is he trying to um almost sabotage what you could have going with what's his name john 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 it just did the no, something's not av- adding up between the three of you like it sounds like they're communicating about something and you're out of the know. And then obviously like you and John have this ongoing relationship and Tim is sour about it. Like, I don't know who else would talk like that uh, when she finds out who the real you is. Right. I, that wouldn't come from jealousy. Like that didn't sound like it was coming from protecting you. Cause if it was, then they would have had that conversation with you. Exactly. Hey, I'm really concerned that you might not know these really serious things about this person, blah, blah, blah. It was, it's, total jealousy and sabotage and right that's icky to have to see them again uh i don't know i kind of put it like i know it's not the same but like i put it into like kind of what our friend group has gone through yeah and like i would i think time heals all with this type of shit yeah like and i the longest you can wait to like let it diffuse so that because right now you even said you're like i want to tell him off valid but maybe that is telling that you should wait because When you do see each other, obviously telling him off is not going to heal or solve anything. It'll feel good in the moment. You're going to feel shitty 10 seconds later. Like that's not how this should be handled. So maybe wait until you know you can go into it because the conversation does need to be had, but go into it. It's like, hey, like, can we talk about what happened a few months ago? Like this is how I'm feeling rather than like attack, attack. Attack. Right. And I, I would go into it with expectations low it Always. seems like since he's kind of tell telling other people on the sidelines that he's remorseful or like showing that he's remorse, remorseful about the situation, but he's not responding to your um, outreach to like actually sit down and have, have a conversation. It seems like he might be reluctant to face the truth of right. his um assumed jealousy yeah like will right? even be able to receive what you're trying to right. work through I, I just don't think it's time yet no no and just go in with um keep your cool mm-hmm. and i think time will help with that for sure mm-hmm. um I'm sorry though that's so yeah. icky it never feels good dur- having any shit like that in a friend group but then when there's like heartstrings involved and jealousy is always just the worst it's i'm sorry but uh yeah wait sit on this one and it it's not I don't think it has anything to do with you specifically. I, I, it's probably beef between them that they clearly have unresolved. So try and not take it personally. I don't think it's like a hundred percent about you. I think they probably just have something going on between them that they need to resolve. And it's clearly got like wedged between what you and John potentially could have been. Okay. This next one, the subject line really just got me here. Kristen McTee got me my degree. I read this and I was like, I actually trying to think if I ever did this for someone. I don't know how I would. Oh, ever <laughs> maybe you pat. Have Was you I a ever, teacher? And I forgot. Have you ever passed out diplomas? Like you know how you can have like appoint someone to give you your. No, oh, I would love that. Miss O'Connor gave me mine. Ed gave me mine. Oh, wait at College Park? No, no. But Ed was Venom. Yeah, that's why. I was, who did you College Park though? Oh, um, Frau Otis, oh, my German teacher. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, so let's see when I give someone a degree. Hi, Kristen and Alex. I'm Gail, and this is my first time writing into the pod. Hi, Gail. Yeah, Gail. First, I wanted to say thank you for single-handedly getting me through my part-time student worker job these past four years. If it wasn't for you two yapping in my head, 
We are yappers. Yapping. We are yappers. <laughs> Yapping in my headphones. I probably would have died of boredom or mold oh. poisoning, but that's a story for another day and my shitty office. I like oh you, Gail. Mold poisoning is st- very serious. I hope you don't have it. <laughs> For real, though. I mean, yeah. I mean, you've experienced it. Yeah, it ruined my life. Anyway. (laughs) Wait, the next word is actually anyway. (laughs) Anyway, that's why I'm emailing. I graduated college finally. Congrats. Yeah, congrats. Okay, here's where it gets sappy. Kristen is the reason I went to college. Maybe not the sole reason. Okay. Maybe not the sole (laughs) reason, but we can pretend. I'm a fashion girly through and through. I've always wanted to work in the industry, but I didn't think I'd fit in even though I could put together a fire outfit. Mm. Back to Kristen's LA er- era and the vlog squad days. Kristen would come back from f- come back from working in fashion and walk into whatever shit was happening into the vlogs. You two walked or sorry, you two talked about uni at Fitum, but Kristen and her style and fashion videos always stood out to me. Yeah, even though you you only ever touched on the topic briefly, you still inspired me to go to school for fashion. Aww. I followed my literal passion because my 14 year old self watched. Oh my God, that's crazy. My 14 year old self watched your little vlogs and I thought your job was cool. Four years later, I'm working in fashion and quite literally chasing my passion. So I guess this is just to say thank you and keep doing you. Not really asking for advice, but I wanted to share the story with love from Abigail or from Gail XOXO. Wow. That's so cool. That's, I love that. I did something. Right. <laughs> you did, Kristen. Yeah, you you went to college. It's amazing. Congrats that you graduated and And it's always so special when you find your yeah. passion and oh you get god, to do yeah. your passion every day for work. Yeah, oh my god. Well what a dream. Woo! Go You're cool, you. Gail. I hope you figure out the poisoning though. Yeah, definitely take that seriously. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's the next one. I might have a stalker with oh. like seven exclamation marks. You should get that checked out. <laughs> Okay, hello, beautiful ladies. I want to start this off by saying how much I love the pod. I've been a listener from the very first episode, and you both make Mondays something to look forward to. This story might take a minute, and I'm in desperate need of some advice, so let's get right into it. Before I start talking about my stalker, I think some background knowledge is needed. I'm currently a freshman at an aeronautical... Can you look that up for me? A-E... A-E-R-O nautical university. Specializing in aviation and aerospace. Oh, you're so cool. Jesus Christ. Fuck. You are so cool. Okay. God, you're immediately smarter <sighs> than us. Yeah. No, like, <laughs> I have some questions for you. <laughs> okay. I'm currently a freshman at an aeronautical university here in the States studying aerospace engineering. Oh, there we go. Jesus. <laughs> this statistic might be slightly outdated, but last I heard the university was only 30% women. All of my classes continue to prove this statistic, especially being an engineer. In addition, my school is pretty small compared to most universities, so everyone has a familiar face and we see classmates frequently. Okay, now let's get into the stalker. I met him, let's call him Joe, in August of 2023 in an introductory course for freshman students. We exchanged the typical first meet questions like what's your major, where are you from, what does your schedule look like, etc., Turns out Joe is also majoring in aerospace engineering, and when I told him I was majoring in it as well, he had an immediate sexist response. This is a huge red flag for me, and I made a mental note to stay away from him altogether. As the semester went on, I could not seem to get away from him, though. Joe showed up at the dining hall the same time I did every day, even when I switched my eating schedules around. He even sat with my friends and me multiple times. Every time he sat with us, we responded to his sexism with blunt unamusement, and he still couldn't take the hint. I shrugged this off, though, because it is such a small school, and it isn't it isn't uncommon to see the same people throughout the days. And maybe Joe really was just trying to be friendly despite his lack of social intelligence. There were a few times I was walking back from the gym, and I would come across him. In these cases, he would say things under his breath as I passed and give me a, quote, cool guy head nod after looking me up and down. I'm not a confrontational person, though, so I always tried my best to look past it and seem clueless to his body language. At the new spring semester, I found out Joe moved two doors down from me in the dorm. The dorm building I am in is a little different compared to most because the door to my dorm goes directly outside, so I have a big window in my dorm facing the balcony the students walk on to get to their dorm. In addition, 
My dorm window faces the stairwell, so I have a lot of traffic by my window all the time. In the past three months, he will routinely walk up the stairs, stop in front of my window, stand there until he gets my attention, wave with a grin, and walk away. Oh, this is, I have literal chills. This has happened countless times now, and I have started to feel scared to be visible from my window every time I hear someone walking up the stairs. If I were the one giving advice, I would tell myself to tell the residential advisor, but I don't think I can really do that in this case. This is because last semester, my RA was doing the monthly housing inspection of the dorm rooms. He is also a guy, and he brought a stranger into our dorm with him. We reported this incident to the housing department, to a woman, and I kid you not, all she said was, what a bummer. He should not be doing that. I will have a conversation with him. What a bummer. That's insane. (laughs) What an insane response. We also told her to keep the report anonymous, to which she did not because our RA was knocking on our door the next day to deliver a half-assed apology. My RA is also roommates with Joe. More recently, he will sit very close to me in the library, and he always puts a hat on after he sits down, literally like Joel Goldberg. (laughs) Yep. From the TV series, You. Sometimes I am in the library at late hours of the night, and when this happens i'm nervous to walk back to my dorm because he one knows my route my route from the library and two he knows where i live i guess i'm just asking for any advice you ladies have this is a tricky topic but i just feel helpless and weak right now i also don't know if i'm just being paranoid or if joe really is a creep thank you for listening and for your help so sorry for the length love you girls and i'm looking forward to this monday's ep and all of the episodes to come happy spring love and then i'm gonna keep or i'm gonna keep you anonymous i would call him out yeah I think like to his face yeah like even if the next time you like see him at the window i'd literally like be like hey what are you doing yeah <laughs> like poke your head out and be like is you there can't like, be doing that no i'd rather yeah. you not stand in front of my window yeah i don't know i just i wouldn't be nice about this one right it, at all these these types of people you can't tiptoe around their feelings because they take it as literal approval for their actions and mm-hmm. they're gonna keep doing what they're doing because they just like you said he's socially unaware and can't pick up on the social cues so he's not gonna know what he's doing is wrong unless you like, flat out tell lay him it out yeah Hey, look, I don't want you to stand outside my door, please. Like, I'll see if we cross paths in the halls, if I see you in the library, totally we could fine. say hi, but don't stand at my door. I would still tell your RA or whatever, too. Regardless. I don't know, though, because his RA is his roommate. So? It's more like then the roommate, would be like, hey, so and so was complaining. Yeah. But it sounds like the know. RA is already, like, not serious with his. Yes, role. but, like, then what's the harm yeah yeah like i would i would do it, it's, it's the same thing as holding people accountable like whether they're going to do something or not i'd still call them out yeah I'd, i would tell the ra and then the next time you see him in the window or whatever i like got the door or whatever be like hey this makes me really uncomfortable i'm just gonna be honest with you and then i don't know if you're allowed to do this but like can you get blinds right that's like another thing too to protect yourself i mean yeah to that point too Kristen, like tell as many people as possible yeah it doesn't matter and i think especially since it like if you're telling as many people as possible if something ever does escalate right it's not like out of nowhere right. then people know and are aware of his past actions mm-hmm. and it's not you're not like throwing quote shade at some random guy Just accusing him of doing something weird right it's like, no you'll have record of complaining about this multiple times yes which unfortunately is necessary for things to be believed in these scenarios yeah so tell as many people as possible i mean who cares i think it's better that that's his roommate yeah it just sounds like this guy doesn't give the ra doesn't give a fuck either way because he brought a stranger into the room like it just sounds like he doesn't take his job seriously in the first place what i think would happen though like to that point because you're right he clearly doesn't take shit seriously he's gonna be like uh yo so-and-so came and complained uh, and like they'll, they'll giggle about it but it'll at least let joe know like you're you, not dumb right you're picking up on some weird shit that and he's you have your do. eyes on him yeah right so you let it be the butt of their joke that day but at least it's in his head that like you're not oblivious to his weird ass actions right now true very true yeah i'm i'm sorry you're going through this i think 
until you're a more like more comfortable with the situation and you let it known that you don't want him around try and like walk around with a friend and yeah. you know i i hate even having to like say that it's but our world yeah yeah just keep yourself safe and like let, don't put headphones on or anything yeah. like don't close out any noise around you just be aware I, that's, that should be a rule with honestly all women who walk around your your campus or even like in the city and stuff like don't don't have headphones in where you can't hear anything around you yeah like i don't even wear my airpods out anymore unless i'm like going to the gym which is super close but like other than that when i'm like going like down to soho or anything i don't know not at all you just need to be able to like hear be things aware of your surroundings my headphones have a i, I don't know if i'm like other brands do but my headphones have a cool setting where you could you it's like someone aerial in. space yeah the and, airpods have that too i just get freaked out still uh, i can hear people's conversations behind me with the yeah them on. mine's like very clear and i can tell direct like directionally where yeah. they're from me too um, or does yours do the thing where like if a siren goes by it'll it, like it's, yeah it like shuts it off because it knows it's on this side of you yeah it's so cool how do they even build that sound engineers man there's a little i don't know tiny robots that, that inside <laughs> no that's not that's real. okay sound engineer yeah but do they control that they probably make the technology for it right i don't know like and sound I think engineer a, i think a sound engineer is like a like producers and stuff Seems like an umbrella term. I would hope. I I don't fucking know. We're just we're gonna make ourselves look more stupid. More stupid. Okay, next one. This subject line's interesting. Renting my partner to his therapist. Huh. I don't even know what that means. Hi guys. I'd like to stay anonymous, but I still want to share my story with you. Before I jump into it, I want to express my gratitude for the podcast. It kept me going n numerous times when I felt like giving up or was just fed up with life generally. Oh, wow. That's huge. I'm glad you're here. So anyway, here comes my situation. Excuse my English. It's not my first language. My boyfriend, 26, and I, almost 22, have been together for a bit over a year. We lived five minutes away for a while, then had a long distance relationship for eight months and now we live two hours away so you could say we've really experienced a lot of situations not just regarding the distance of the relationship but also within the relationship and our personal life travels mental health struggles financials the list continues i would say from day one there were a lot of challenges from defining the connection itself from making it exclusive to living situations and future plans i really feel that both of us needed to be extremely determined and patient in this relationship because it really was demanding. But for the last couple months, I started to feel like maybe it drains me more than it gives energy back. The constant management with the calls, the meetups, the problems from the past, him not completely owning his truth and past and changing the stories every time or constantly changing his mind in the beginning, whether he wants an exclusive relationship or not, and so on has made me question our relationship a lot. I also understand that he had a very seriously traumatizing life, near-death experience, SA, being cheated on, and so on, which I have a lot of compassion for. I've been there for him during one of the hardest times of his life, and he also helped me realize certain things within myself and opened up more about my past and emotions. For a while, it was a great relationship. We connected on a very deep intellectual and emotional level which made me feel heard and understood after so long in my life. However, for the last couple months, I started to feel my repressed problems, anger, and disappointment of him taking over me, and I started to resent him. We even had some very serious fights over them, then a lot of calm and very honest discussions about these issues. He was open to listen to them, and I felt good expressing them after such a long time, but for some reason, I still don't feel over them. I also feel that sometimes I can't express if something disturbs me, because he takes things to the extreme. For example, if I tell that a certain tell him that a certain behavior disturbs me, he just completely stops it and kind of has a grudge over it. This also made me not want to express my problems, but then when he asks for it, either he does this or he completely breaks down because he cannot accept that he could be in certain ways and it makes him really bad that he is certain ways. 
To have a bit of context, two months ago, he finally reached out to a therapist after an argument where I expressed I also feel really fucked up and he can't just dump things on me whenever he wants to. I need a heads up beforehand. And the therapist actually suggested him to go in for a a three-month intensive trauma therapy. So this also shows that he really has a lot to work on and to deal with, which unfortunately he's willing to do. Or sorry, you said fortunately. For a second, I was like, why was that? Yeah, was that bad? You said fortunately, sorry. Which fortunately he's willing to do. However, I also started to feel that I don't have the emotional space to support him anymore. Mm-hmm. I tried breaking up with him a month ago. It happened after after one and a half months of not seeing each other. So eventually we talked it out and decided not to break up. But see how things are going to unfold now so we can see each other more often. I would say that things are going all right, but I still feel exhausted. I also don't feel sexually comfortable around him anymore for for a while. A week ago, his therapist suggested that we both write about how each of us perceives him so this could help tackle certain things in him. I did my part today, and oh boy, I tried to stay in a very observing position without judgment, but it turned out to be to be a rant about him and the things that disturb and hurt me in the relationship. After this task, I got confused again how to handle the situation. I know my story is a bit longer and also confusing, but it's really hard to give a short description without going into the details of a year-long relationship. Anyway, I feel kind of hopeless and stuck at this point, not just with him, but generally with my life. So what's next? Regardless of you reading this on the podcast or not, I'm just happy I could blurt things out because I really needed to without having any judgment. You guys are the best and hope to enjoy your podcast for a long time. Sending love to you, Anonymous. You feel so drained because this is obviously sucking your energy. And I could tell you have a big heart because you're like, you have like this compassion for, you know, the very unfortunate things he's been through in his life. But you, you said it yourself and it's very awesome that you're this self-aware that it is draining you. And like you, you know, that one where you were like, you have to tell me before you unload on me. That's too much, blah, blah, blah. I think, I think this is a tale of it. This is my opinion. I think there, you guys should break up. Um, I think it's draining you and it's only a year in, um, you know, like I feel like it's draining you more than it's, uh, this like new found love that you're, it's, you're empowering each other and, who's to say what the future holds once, you know, he has this, I love that he's doing like this three month intensive thing. I think that'll be great for him. But like, you also need to take care of yourself right now. You're saying you're, you're having your own shit, but you're writing in to us about someone else's shit. Like, yeah, I want you to put yourself first in this is what I'm trying to say. And it feels like this is just one of those scenarios where you may be catapulted, catapulted him and his journey of healing, but he, fully needs to address this on his own Mm -hmm. and it doesn't sound like like it might be manifesting and uh showing in your guys's relationship and your guys's fights but it doesn't sound like there's anything like rooted in your guys guys's relationship right now so I think this is just healing that he needs to do in his own world and I think once he addresses that himself then maybe you guys can you know cross paths later down the line and be in a in a healthy relationship where he now has all these tools that won't affect the relationship yeah it just yeah and and you too yeah exactly like you're still both of you guys are still so young and for him to be going through this three month program it's program right yeah like i think it was just like intensive therapy yeah it's very like that's very great of him and it's it's that's a lot of hard work Mm -hmm. and it's really hard to acknowledge especially at that age for a man to know that he needs to go through that therapy like that's good on him good on him and he he just really needs to focus on it right now and I think a relationship on top of that is just added stressors that could hold back his healing yeah and I just think you know you guys are so young and focus on you right now and then later down the line, if things, you know, end back, you guys end back together, then it could possibly work. 
I feel like it's telling too. like you, you tried to break it off and then you guys ended up being like, no, let's not. And then you're still like, wait, I feel shitty. I think that's your psyche telling you like, ah, we almost did it. Like yeah. you were, you know, you were, you were supposed to break up. And you know, if you end up having that conversation again, approach it with, you know, it's, it's not like a, it's not a fight. It's not to attack him. He's not just the only problem here. Like I think there's, a very bigger narrative going on with like your souls right now where it's like, right. We, we held each other's hands into this next step of healing. I think we just need some time apart. You go focus on you. And, and if you kind of phrase it like that, I think that could help, you know, maybe both of you not feel like this is your world crashing down, which, you know, 90% of breakups feel like so valid. Right. Um, yeah, I, w- I would take some time alone and I'm sorry you're dealing with this. That's heavy and it's energy sucking and, I get it, but uh, I think it could also be, like, a really big shedding moment and, like, help you really turn to a new page, and I think this could be very good, too. I know it might not feel like it, but, like, I think this could be the step, the stepping stone to, like, some really, really sustainable healing that will, like, set the tone for your, your life, for your love life, for your confidence in yourself because you're trusting what you're guts telling you right now about you know you're feeling icky that you got back together like it there's a lot to be learned right here and I I I have a lot of faith in you like I could tell your head's in a good a good place I I know it might not feel like that but like you even challenging these actions and like writing in and even thinking that something could be wrong is telling me like you your head is in the right space Mm -hmm. your feelers are feeling things correctly so be proud of yourself in that also, your English is perfect. Every yeah. time people write in there, my English, right. I'm like, you speak better English than me. Right. Literally. Okay, next one. This one's called, I got married three months ago and I wish I never did. Please help. Okay. Hey, girly pops. I love the pod and you guys. I've been listening since day one and it's been truly amazing to see how far y'all have come since then. Please tell Link I say hi. Oh, Link. She's laying in the sun she right now. She says Hi. Well, this is definitely going to be a long one and a warning to you as it's so damn scramble, but I just wanted to make sure I got in as much info as I could before I head off to work. I'm sorry in advance, lol. Let's dive in, girlies. Please keep me anonymous. I met my husband when I was 11 and he was 12. We'll call him Max. We were best friends for years and then he confessed feelings for me at 16 years old and 17 years old. I told him I wasn't ready for a relationship, so we continued on as friends. A couple of years pass and I was now 18 and him 19 and I finally gave in and we started to date. Our whole relationship from then to now was great and I really thought I was going to marry this guy, lol. We started dating in December of 2017 so we got the taste of a quote real life relationship to a COVID relationship and then in 2021 we moved in together with our two besties and lived with them until August of 2023. As they got married and moved to a different state, we then moved in with my sister, and that's where we are at now. My husband and I eloped in January of this year. We've had such an amazing relationship, but for the past couple of months, I felt so lost, and I no longer feel like I'm the person that he met so long ago. Also, with COVID, I feel like how I feel like how I'm growing up mentally has been so delayed. My whole life, I kept telling people, yes, I am blank age, but I still feel like I'm 14. That used to uh, always scare me, but within the past two months, I finally feel my age now, which is 24. I'm turning 25 next month. I'm so scared and don't know what to do. He's on such a different path in his life, and I'm figuring out we don't have common interests anymore. I want to go out with my coworkers. I want to travel. I really want to make new friends as I have like none, and I want to move to New York for my career. The New York moving thing is so important to me and he really doesn't want to do it, but said he would. But even when I bring it up, he just continues to talk shit about New York. We also have so many problems with money. It's such a common argument. I have so much credit card debt. Sorry, Kristen. I know I'm ashamed, but I'm really working on it. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. It's it's so common and it's you like Kristen said, you could fix it. And it's just very hard right now. It's also very, very, very codependent, and I'm realizing how independent I am. I'm unbelievably stressed out of my mind. I'm so tired, and I really just want to be alone so damn badly. 
We have a trip coming up on the 29th for two weeks. I finally ended up talking to my mom as I'm really bad at talking and telling people what I'm feeling. I have a lot going on in my little brain as well. Like I have no idea who I am and work is the only thing making me happy at this point. My mom thinks I should wait until after our trip to break it off. I did tell her I eloped. I've been feeling this way a while now and it's been eating me alive inside. The whole marriage thing was my idea from the start. When we first started dating, he didn't want marriage. And then as time went on, he did want it. I brought up getting eloped and he was down with it. I know I'm stupid for going through with this marriage, but at the time it felt right. He also tried breaking up with me twice in the past, once in 2020 and once in 2021, but we stayed together. I'm also convinced he cheated on me back in 2019, but that's a story I can tell you when I moved to New York, LOL. Big detail. Yeah, he denied it. I'm so sorry again if this is scrambled and all over the place. I really needed to vent, but I also wanted to hear what you guys have to say from an outsider's POV because me and Max literally have all the same friends, which also terrifies me if we break it off because we really only have like five friends. What are your thoughts? I'm also scared on how he'll take it if we do break up. You can be honest and tear me apart if needed, but it feels nice to just get this off my chest too. Thank you for everything. You guys are literally angels sent from above, and I hope I get to meet you soon. I'm going to GovBall this year, so hopefully we run into each other. Love ya. Oh my god, yes. Yeah, if, if you see, see us, you, please come say hi. Yeah, anybody, if you guys are going to GovBall, if you see us, totally come say hi. Okay, you're not stupid. Yeah, you gotta like be nicer be to, nice yourself. to yourself. Be nice to yourself. Like, that's coming from me. I, like, the way you're talking to yourself, I, like, I do that too, but like, stop making yourself the problem here like yeah you're not stupid no i just think you said to give it to you straight i think you gotta just do it yeah. i don't think you should wait until after this trip i don't think you should wait another day it's never going to be the right time. the right time uh, and this moment feels good i'm no. gonna break up now like it's it's no, it's never gonna come it's that's yeah it's not a thing no. and it's never gonna get easier mm -hmm. the way that you're feeling really does like muster up inside you and it comes out in really fucking evil ways and I just I don't want you to go through that the longer you wait the, too right oh. the longer you wait it just gets worse and worse and I really want you to to free yourself from this I mean it sounds like the fact that you guys have broken up a couple times already and you have this inkling that he cheated on you in 2019 it just sounds like you guys almost got carried away in the like idea of you two mm -hmm. especially since you've known each other for 15 years now like that's that's only natural that you guys have gone through this together and you felt like it was the right time because you've known each other for so long you've probably been through so many ups and downs as friends and in a relationship and I just think you guys got carried away with the whole ma marriage thing but it's not too late to get out of it no never no, like anybody else listening if you're in an even longer marriage or relationship it's it's never too late I feel like it's so human where people are like oh but like we've put so much work into this like it's been so long and I respect that too like you know I there's a part of our generation that I think just always sees the the other you know the grass is greener always is like oh this isn't coming easy this it must not be meant to be right and like I definitely don't side with that either I think I think our generation could learn a lot from past generations that like do work on their marriage and do put, you know, uncomfortable work in it. But then there's also like that line where it's like, okay, you're exhausting every possibility and it's just not clicking. Yeah. And that's also very much a possibility too. And that's what this feels like. It's, it's not like a, you know, we get people writing in about like, I, you know, I need to move here for work and, we just don't know what to do because he's in a really good place at his career. Like it's more like logistical. you're trying to like figure out the puzzle pieces, right? This is like you, like you said, like you're craving this independence and you want to move. Like, right. I think that's what this, this negative self-talk is stirring up in you right now is like that, you know, that angel on your shoulder. That's like, come on. Like I see the world for us. Like I want to, like, I relate to that. Like I want to move mm -hmm. and I, I want to bloom. I want to blossom. I want to spread my wings like that type shit. And then the other side is like, oh, but I built this life already. Right. Oh, I have this trip planned. Oh, I'm already married. Like you're, you have this like 
fight within right now that you could very easily stop. Easily is maybe not the right term. It's still going to be icky, but it's it's, it's one decision that you have to make. Yep. It's and you one know what decision. It is. I agree though. Like if you can, I would do it before the trip. Yeah. Also save yourself some money. If you, right. Maybe let that be your deciding factor. If you cancel the trip, can you get money back? Because if you could get money back. Or like go on the trip with their best friend. Yeah. But like what if it's like flight like shit? A, like it's in his name. Like right, you can right, just transfer right. yeah. flight tickets. Figure that part out. I would try and do it before the trip though. Yeah. They leave the 29th. Especially with this. So that's like this week. That's like tomorrow. That's Friday. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Do it this week. Ooh, if you can. If you can. If not. If I mean, you can. Yeah. No pressure. Just but with this in you your home, though. With this in your head, in your heart right now, how are you going to go on vacation with this person? Yeah. You know? That's like doing yourself a disservice of shoving down these feelings and then just acting like the happy couple on vacation. Like. Right. That's not going to do anything. I feel like an annulment is still an option, right? Do you know the amount of time? No idea. I have no idea. It was an episode of something, but they like walk counterclockwise around the table and it breaks the marriage. I think it's like a Disney Channel show oh. or something. That sounds That's all right. All I know is an annulment. Yeah, It's like a movie or a show. They like, oh, they just got married. They're like, oh, I don't want to do it. And they're like, okay, you need to walk counterclockwise around the table. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I don't know. I've never heard of that. Someone's going to know in the comments. I hope so. If not, then. It's a figment of your imagination. That was a weird dream. <laughs> okay, next one. The subject line is manipulative mother, gay sister, oblivious family, and little old me. Hmm. This is just a classic tale. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a Bernstein Bears book. <laughs> Hi, guys. Please keep anonymous. I want to start by saying I've been a fan since day one. I used to listen to the pod while driving around during COVID. Crazy. Here we go. I need advice. My sister told me about a year ago that she and her husband were separating due to her having feelings for women. Dope. <laughs> Flash forward to about a month ago. She tells me she has a girlfriend. Dope. She then tells me that no one knows like anything. Her and her separated husband have been playing pretend this entire time. My entire family assumes that they are in a happy, healthy relationship. Oh, no. Fuck. They have a four-year-old four year old son, and my family is really close. She didn't tell anyone because she thought my mom and immediate family, mainly my mom, would be upset with her and not accept her. Flash forward to about two weeks ago when she tells my immediate family everything. My mom says she accepts, she accepts her and has no issues. My mom is manipulative and only cares about what people think, especially her four siblings. So when, so my sister wants to bring her girlfriend to Easter dinner. We have a huge family and everyone will be in attendance. Her and my mom got into an argument and are still fighting because my mom thinks she should tell people, and then parentheses, you said a Facebook post. That's crazy. <gasps> Before springing it on to everyone at Easter. That's nuts. My sister thinks it doesn't matter because this is who she is and she doesn't care what people think. I support my sister and everything. I just need an outside perspective on the situation. My mom says people still think she's in a happy marriage and that's how it should stay at Easter. Should my sister make a post before Easter or just show up? Thanks, ladies. You two have shaped my adulthood. Show up or show out. Yeah. A Facebook post is crazy. That's crazy. You know what? Can I say real quick? Like, sorry if this is rude. Your mom reminds me of in She's the Man, Amanda Bynes' mom. That's like, yes. honey, you need to wear this dress. Put on the dress. You need to make everybody feel like they love you. Like, Literally. You're perfect. My daughter's yeah. perfect. Like, it feels like that. A Facebook post is crazy. I would. Crazy. I would show up. Hand I, in I would, hand. I'd be so disrespectful. <laughs> Do it. That's just me, though. I don't Do know. it. I don't know. Like, like I'm not going to project, <laughs> but I would be ruthless. Listen. I'd show up with a rainbow flag. <laughs> Do it. Everyone just showed up dress, ju- show up dressed in a rainbow. Yeah. People are always going to have their shitty opinions and their shitty projections. Especially about sexuality. Exactly. And unfortunately, this is all... Um, like happening around a family holiday. I think the scenario hopefully would be a little different if your family wasn't faced with this big, like 
meeting of family members all at once. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. this unfortunately takes away the opportunity for your sister to have these probably very fucking hard and raw conversations that she wants to have with her family members. And now she has to do it all in one big day. Yeah. But she's just got to go in there hand in hand with her partner, not give a fuck about what anyone says. And if they have an issue, it'll all be hashed out on that one day. And then it's all over with, but she, she just can't can't control how her and her new girlfriend are going to live. Exactly. You know, if it makes anybody that uncomfortable, then they don't need to come next time. But like, don't I don't don't want them to recluse exactly don't people who are uncomfortable can separate themselves then like right off she shouldn't have to censor her new happy relationship Mm -hmm. from her very hurt family oh devastated oh my god they're devastated Facebook I'm please I wish I would have seen this on Facebook for you told me that would have really buffered the pain insane I would and I I actually would be more upset if I saw something like that on Facebook first to be like oh why you didn't tell, you me? tell me like right and for your, your mom to think sorry we're also not homophobic exactly and sorry we just we really don't like your mom right I'm now pissed. but for your mom to think that it's even a safe space for your sister to go on facebook with a open com- comment section for your family to throw out their wrath behind the safety of a computer screen is nuts like as if in, that is the healthier world. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. what world is that okay for what? Yeah. For you to think that what? Yeah. My family, without airing out too much dirty laundry, <laughs> <laughs> my family had a similar situation. Um, and the way they went about it, the person that it included, was they just showed up with said family changes where we knew some people in the family wouldn't approve like exact situation, not exact situation, but exact dynamic that you're talking about family brunch. People are going to be there that don't know the reality. Da, da, da. And it was on like, I'll put in quotes, uncomfortable for the person who was uncomfortable for like a little bit. And they had their opinions and they'll still even like shoot the shit under their breath. But like, You just have to do it and then like rip off the bandaid kind of thing. You know, I know that was like really ambiguous, but I'm saying is tell your sister to just fucking show up. Yeah. I want Bev. We have more spin drifts. I want like a Coca-Cola. Ooh, with lemon. Can we do a bodega run right now? I just want Bev. Yeah, we can. All right. We'll be right back guys with Bev. That's exactly what I wanted. Wow. We just had our personal assistants, a.k.a. us. (laughs) Our alter egos. (laughs) Go get Coca-Cola from CVS. We needed to go to CVS anyway because Alex needed to get toothpaste and I needed to get Epsom salts. I haven't brushed my teeth in three days. (laughs) Just kidding. Oh, I was like, Alex. No. (laughs) Um, And then we just, two birds, one stone. We got Bev and then we got our errands done. Mid podcast. (laughs) Nice little halftime that we had. But don't yeah. worry, to you, it was like we didn't even go anywhere. Doesn't this look like this cup doesn't hold a lot, but it actually so wide. holds so much? Yeah, because, I mean, we have the same amount, and it looks like you have, like, half the amount of soda. Yeah. We got the mini Cokes. I feel like those are so much better. It's all I need. Mm-hmm. I never finish a whole one. Especially with my coffee intake today. This is the last thing I need, honestly. I'm going to be wired, mm. but with lemon, I feel like I'm in Italy. Yeah, this is unmatched, this combo. Okay, hopping right back in. The title of this next entry is, is sex overrated? Hey girls, I have never thought I would be the one to send my dilemmas to you, but here I am hoping for some guidance. For context, I'm in a relationship and we have been dating officially for some months now, but I've been seeing each other casually for one and a half years on and off with some distance as well. He is the sweetest, most kindest person I have ever met, and he treats me like I've never been treated. We have so much chemistry. We can talk about everything and have so much in common. In some ways, I feel like he is, quote, my person. However, I feel like I haven't been able to fully let him in. 
Our sex life is basically non-existent and I haven't felt attracted to him sexually. I just can't bring myself to be sexual with him. We have tried in the past, but it was sort of a letdown, which was maybe the cause. And I feel like we just haven't been able to connect yet on that aspect. But I let myself stay in this situation out of fear of regretting leaving since he is so good to me. I know some of it might also be because of past dating experiences, but for some time, I thought I would be able to overlook this. Since sex was never something I actively looked for and prioritized much, and basi- er, sorry, and because the other aspects of the relationship were so good, but lately I can't help but overthink this. Is this something worth working on, or if the sexual chemistry is lacking, will it always be? Love you girls. Thank you for being my company for the past four years. No need to keep it on. Love from France. <gasps> we. Oh, wow. <laughs> we. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for writing in. This is kind of something that you have to ask yourself if you're almost, I don't know, I'm going to talk in like my perspective here because I feel like if something is going too good, I ask myself if I'm questioning these little bits because of external factors or if because I'm actually concerned about it. It sounds like since your sex life to you in the past wasn't a make or break situation in relationships, now that it's not a factor, sit down and ask yourself, is this a problem just in your head or do you actually have an issue with the sexual life between you and your partner right now like you're saying is it is it a lack of chemistry or is it a mental block yes is that what you're saying yes okay that's valid yeah Yeah. does that make is that making sense yeah I, I don't know it just sounds like since everything else is so good and maybe just sit down and have a conversation with him like does he feel like the sex is lacking is this some is the sex between you guys something you actually want to work on because of your wants and needs or do you feel like it's I don't know I don't know how to put this I mean to go off the mental block part that was kind of what I was going to ask you to and like don't take this too intensely because it seems like you guys do have a good relationship but like do you think maybe you're not feeling comfortable physically for maybe uh like a subconscious trigger or lack of um safety or that you might be feeling is he subconsciously reminding you of something that may be right. you're uncomfortable feeling like and that's not to say like you're the issue here like it could also very much just be like some people vibe on all levels but sexual like think right. about platonic friendships you have even with the other sex that you are usually attracted to you might like you know there it doesn't it, it, it's not uncommon is what I'm trying to say but yeah like being in a relationship obviously there's there you know Usually you want like a physical connection. I mean, we'll talk about your situation. You're writing in about it. It's clearly a concern. Maybe there's just something like, I don't know, whenever I've had lulls in sexual activity within my past relationships, it's usually when something's going on in in my head or in our relationship, like towards each other, our feelings towards each other. And it's not always this big blowout either. It could just be like, I'm really fucking stressed at work and my head's elsewhere or you know, it's, it's, it could be something small or something big, but I think maybe ask yourself, like, what is feeling different outside of the literal act of sex that could be creating this disconnect? Right. I think that's what I was trying to get at, too, is if there's something beyond the physical act of sex that could be the existing issue. And like you said, it's not usually like this big blowout, but it is a physical reaction when your head can't get to the place where you want to be intimate with someone your I mean your body needs to physically literally open up to other people if and only if you're comfortable doing that and if mm-hmm. if there's something else going on like behind the scenes that's stopping you from getting to that intimate level with that person that's then also something that uh, something else that needs to be addressed yeah maybe start digging there or if that's if, if you like feel like none of this is applying to you maybe are you not feeling what you guys are doing in the bedroom is your style like maybe do you want right. to explore with like different types of things you could do in the bedroom like even like different positions or like different levels of foreplay or certain love languages within the con- like connection and everything like maybe you're feeling 
the lack of intimacy on like the physical note. I feel like, I don't know, maybe like we give you two options here to explore. Right. And also that's kind of making me think, I feel like I want to ask more questions about your guys' right. relationship in general, because right. do you guys have any, um, like romance romance between you two in other areas is this a scenario where maybe you guys are just platonic life partners or friends and it wasn't like specifically meant to go past that level because if you guys met and everything was going perfect I feel like that's the natural progression to move on to the next level of romance, but sometimes it's not supposed to go there mm -hmm. and you guys are just meant to be friends. So also sit down and ask yourself that. Yeah. Okay. Next one. The subject line is how to be a therapist to yourself. Mm. I like this one. Hi ladies. I love you both. I was just watching Kristen on Trisha's podcast and heard Kate, heard Kay say, I love that you call me Kay, mm. heard Kay say that she was thinking about going back to school for psychology I know about acupuncture, just not not the other contender in the running. It was a light thought of mine. I, I just, the one thing that scares me about that is how many years it fucking takes to become a therapist. That's a whole other topic. I just feel like I've lost a lot of time. Anyway, honestly, share this only if you want. It may fuck some of you up pulling this curtain back. I just thought I'd share since Kay was thinking of becoming a therapist. Let me explain. Okay, maybe this is exactly what I needed to hear. <laughs> I graduated from college in 2021 with a degree in psychology. I then went to only one semester of graduate school after for clinical psychology. I dropped out. While I was there, though, I had a class called Therapy 101. This is where I literally learned how to conduct a therapy session. So I'm going to give you the inside scoop. <laughs> so many little details, of course, but the biggest question or sorry, but the biggest thing, do not answer your client's questions. You are almost always encouraged to answer a question back with another question. Not kidding. We would role play in class and our teacher would correct us if we, if we directly answered a question. Let me explain a little bit more. Of course, you can say yes or no to the sky being blue and other things. But when it comes to the, well, what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? How do I fix this? That's when you hit them with the question in response. For example, well, why do you think there's something wrong with you? What do you think you're doing wrong? What do you want to fix? How could we realistically obtain that? Always directing the conversation, yet never guiding it. It's a tactic to get the conversation moving towards the root of the problem. I know if you're in therapy or familiar with it, you're going to be like, yeah, duh. My therapist never, really, never genuinely answers my questions. But for me, this info is so shocking and world shattering because of the message behind it. No one knows the fucking answer, not even your <laughs> licensed professional, because everyone's individual answer is within them, because we're all human and have our own, e own each individual experience. My solution is going to be different from everyone's. In a way, we're like snowflakes. But this also makes me eternally sad that there's no one answer to anything. Then how are we all supposed to get through life? Your therapist does not even have the answers. She's just guiding you to your own truth and seeking ability. Do I even need a therapist if I now know their little secret? Welcome to my existential <laughs> crisis. This class changed my view on therapy, and I haven't been since because now I think I could just have therapy with myself. Shocker, that doesn't work either. <laughs> Maybe reaching out to you ladies will help this information feel not so much like a burden to me and more like helpful knowledge. Like I said, no one knows anything, including me. Anyway, sorry to send you... All, send you all on your day after just dumping this load of information on you, especially if you decide to read this on the pod. To Kay, psychology being my undergrad degree taught me more about myself than I ever thought I'd know. And I know almost too much about others and why they are the way they are, lol. I find what I, what I did learn from it to be applicable in my everyday life and I'm forever grateful for it. I think being a therapist would look good on you. Hi, Alex. I love you. Oh, I, bye, hi. Alex. I still love you. <laughs> Bye, Kay. Bye, Pod. Shannon. No need to be a non. And then not sent by from iPhone. <laughs> what, you got an Android? You got a green bubble? No, you were on your desktop computer oh, yeah. at, in your childhood computer room. <laughs> <laughs> I This is, this, I love this entry so much. I, I did know this and my therapist actually told me this. She, 
her and I have a very close relationship. Like we've been working together for years and like there was a, a few sessions ago where I, I asked her a therapy question because someone on the hella tier, we actually had our hella zoom call and they were, I was like, jo- kind of jokingly, I was like, guys, I'm going to therapy. You guys want me to ask her anything for you? And she was like, oh wait, actually like I'm in school to be a therapist. I have this question, blah, blah, blah. So I asked her that and she was actually telling me about the behind the scenes, the behind the scenes and how like, you, yeah, you never directly answer blah, blah, blah. The, literally what you just said. Um, now you said like you wrote it in to kind of get our, our perspective. That doesn't make me spiral though. And like, I see, I could see why, especially you going to school for it being like, I don't need th- someone to tell me this when I'm learning it for myself. Like, and I'm, Hey, if that works for you, like, or anybody else listening, like more power to you. But I think it's still so valuable and cannot be replicated to have someone with an unbiased opinion walk you through those things because even if like we adopted that as friends Alex and I and like if I brought something up you kind of just help me question it da, da, da. right you know too much context to where you like and it, just, it would seem like you didn't care right and there's just ways that um f- friends and people that we know and even ourselves validate things even when we're asking the right questions yeah that therapists obviously won't validate That was always the most frustrating thing in therapy because the way my brain works is I have a question. I need an exact formulated answer. And when I wasn't getting answers, I, my, my frustration was visible Mm -hmm. and I, I just, I, that's just the way my brain works. When I'm faced with a clear problem, it's really hard for me to move forward and navigate without a very clear solution. So that was always a big struggle for me in therapy. Yeah. That's, that's been something that I've slowly been breaking through and it's all rooted in control. Yep. But like, I think that's also the beauty of therapy is the fact that they don't just give you the answers on a shiny platter because all of self alignment and self realization is literally working it out by yourself. Cause even if, I worked with my therapist for the rest of my life and told her as much as I could absolutely tell her about every situation I've ever been through. She's still never going to be in my head. So even if she did, you know, if she was even legally allowed to, you know, answer the question with her opinion, it still wouldn't work because like she's not in my head. So I see why therapists only challenge with questions. I think there's something deeper there too. Like I, I think whether you're in therapy or you use your religion as your, um, you know, your, uh, outlet to heal it. A lot of these vices, whether you're like reading books, even like music, like it, a lot of these things do just challenge the receiver to just like look within. Mm-hmm. And I, I just think there's different versions of getting that same diagnosis, if you will. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's cool. I think it's still super powerful. Um, it works for kajillions of people every single day and I love it to pieces, but it is kind of weird to think about. Yeah. yeah. Like they, you know, you're going to school for this. So we pay all this money for therapy and they're like, how does that make you feel? But like it works, right? <laughs> it fucking works. Cause a lot of the times they're also asking the questions that we're even too afraid to ask ourselves or avoiding. Yep. Like she'll be like, well, maybe are you like the power of suggestion too? Like, are you maybe feeling that out of jealousy? And then I'm like, Oh my God, I am probably, I am jealous. And then I cry about it and then it felt good to admit. Yeah. And then it breaks down the shame, like crystals that are all built up around my heart. Like it, the, the question seems so surface level, but it always does have a ripple effect. It just holds a mirror. Yep. That's all. They're just constantly lifting a mirror. Like you see what you just asked. Yeah. Let me challenge that with another question. Yeah, Let's dig deeper in that. I love it. There's power in that for sure. I love therapy. Oh, I. What happened? I booked a fucking workout and I just got the thing that I missed it. What time did you book a workout? I booked a workout for 1245 and I don't know even when I booked it, Alex. I do this no thing way. where like 3 a.m. I'm like oh, I need to eating be pretzels productive. in bed and I'm like, I need to book out <laughs> workouts. It's very toxic. And I'll book out a workout for like the, like a all week. my workouts for the next like week or so. Well, how much is it? 20 bucks down the drain. And you lost 20 your last time, right? Yeah. Every time I don't go, I 
$20 late charge or no show charge. You should just stop going. <laughs> no, I need to work out. It feels good on my knees. Oh, I was kidding. <laughs> oh, you chug that. I got my go go juice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is going to be my last one. It's called Never Felt the Touch of a Man. Hello, girls. My name is Valeria, and I'm 23 years old. No need to keep this anonymous. First, I must say that you are my comfort podcast by far, and I love, or sorry, I look forward to every Monday with you. You guys are such girls' girls. Oh, that's the best compliment. We are girls' girls. And I love, and I love hearing all of your stories and thoughts on anything. Anyway, let me give you a little context. As I said, I'm 23, and I've never had a boyfriend, nor a situation, nor anything. Yes, I've been to some dates with guys. I flirt here and there, but that's pretty much pretty much it the thing is that i find most of guys extremely boring or dumb lol so honestly i don't like to even interact with most of them so valid now i'm not hopeless nor i'm in denial about finding a boyfriend i know that there's somebody out there for me and i'm in no rush honestly also it's not a self-esteem issue either i'm pretty happy with my looks and personality so i know it's not a quote me problem haha I just enjoy being by myself and I have excellent friends and family that give me more love than I could ever ask for. So what's the problem, you may ask? Well, the problem is that I'm so touch deprived, it's not even funny anymore. Literally, my desperation is so severe that sometimes I feel physical symptoms like painful, okay? And here is where I need a girl's advice, please. I know that I don't need to have a boyfriend to have sex, but the idea to have my first time with a friend, nope, like I don't feel ready at all to be that vulnerable with someone I don't have feelings for. What about masturbation? Well, I've tried it sometimes, but honestly, it feels so medical when I do it. Like I could be horny one second and I start touching myself and immediately lose interest. That and I also live with four people in my house, so I rarely have real privacy. Please, if you have any advice for me, it will be much appreciated. Or simply, if someone can relate to me, will make me feel much better. (laughs) Ha ha. Thanks for taking the time reading this. Sorry if there were any grammar mistakes. English is not my first language. Much love from Mexico. Valeria. I would never guess. Your English was great. Perfect. Literally. Perfect. (laughs) Crazy. As far as the the masturbation part of this, I really encourage you and anyone else out there who is struggling with this part of self-love to it it's not spoken about enough but set the mood Mm. it's really really hard and like I've experienced this the same way you have when I when I'm horny and like I want to you know masturbate and have this time with myself if I like bypass the setting the mood you're right. It is. It's hard to stay in that mindset. Right. But I promise you, if you set your environment to match how you're feeling, it really works wonders and it does carry. And I know you said you have roommates, but like, do I don't know. Do you have like an actual, do you share a bedroom with someone? Because then right. I could see how it's hard. But there's always shower time. I was just going to say the bath or the shower. It's it's a great place to be intimate with yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, lighting candles music music is the best way it's even if you throw on headphones because you don't want to like disturb your roommates right throw on some headphones like there are ways to set the mood that really carry the 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 vibes that you're feeling it just it it's like juggling like it just all pours into itself Yep, that's a good analogy and it 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 really helps setting the mood. So please try that because yeah. it works wonders. Yeah, I think don't give up on this siding. You know, you're saying it feels clinical. It feels weird. Like try like try what Alex said. Try new things. Like get a different toy. Get the right. the air air vibe, I think is the name of it, from Balesa. Great toy. It's like a, it's red. It like looks like a little C. It's like dual stimulation. It's really good. Try with new toys and start there. Just you know, don't give up on it. Like I, I don't know. I, I, I sense like a exhaustion from your entry and I just don't want you to give up on yourself because you are deserving of all these emotions and you know, you're it's very vulnerable to admit feeling 
touch de- deprived and like you're it, it's not th- this could be fixed is what I'm trying to say right and um I know there's a thing I think it's called like I forget how to word it but like touch deprivation yoga and oh. it's a thing I actually I do this to myself when I'm like really fucking anxious or really sad oh my god it like makes me like want to cry thinking about it I'm also about to start my period so put your hands like in an x over your chest so your thumbs are like forward if you're on visual you can see me too right now but if you're on audio I'll explain uh cross your arms on your chest thumbs are forward and I have headphones on so it's a little awkward but caress your like around your ears so your fingers are now on the back of your neck and like the thumbs are on your cheek as if someone's like holding holding your your face face. yeah and it feels like someone like I do this when I'm feeling like like alone which I feel a lot or if I'm like sad or like I don't know oh I love it's just such a thing because like I'll I'll, and I'll like with my thumbs I'll like touch my cheeks and I'll be like you're okay you're okay like Mm. it's a way to just like calm yourself down and I know this well it might seem kind of sad to some people like wow you're that touch deprived that you just have to do it yourself but you know what? it'd be like that sometimes and sometimes it is just like the f- actual physical part of it where like you're your nervous system exactly and you're yeah. getting it your body doesn't know it's coming from yourself yeah. a lot of the times yeah I could see that that are like downward strokes on your arms like so now like pretend you're like shivering you're like holding your arms downward strokes that's like a big thing too but even um this is like a good nervous system one too uh up and down on the bridge of your nose oh oh this one makes me immediately want to go to bed i do that to link a lot yeah she loves that one oh (laughs) (laughs) okay elmo (laughs) that's not elmo he'd be like she loves that one (laughs) try do your best elmo hi kids hi kids (laughs) you're almost really good (laughs) You want to come and play? No, that was really scary. That was like Chucky. <laughs> Your Elmo was crazy. I feel like I need to hear a sound bit of it. <laughs> we'll play that back. Yeah. Um, yeah, but all seriousness. Um, those little certain poses or... I even know like stretching in general, like getting your body moving is a way to obviously it's not direct touch and it's not always as emotional, but just literally getting like your blood moving can can do a lot for just stimulation. Yeah. So touch deprivation isn't always sexual is what I'm trying to get to here. Explore all these options, whether you do want to dive deeper into the masturbation or touch deprivation in all aspects and like I feel like you can hit something here with some of the things we're sharing um you mentioned you like you obviously don't want to just like lose your virginity to a friend because blah blah blah. don't even rush on that yeah and you said you're not in a rush so I think maybe if you focus on the things we just talked about that'll kind of like subside your um your feel or your need to rush into losing your virginity but yeah you're in a place right now where you don't even feel like you need a boyfriend so which is great yeah, dude. And I, I love that you're in such a good place and you're okay not rushing these things. So don't feel like you need to rush the sex aspect of it just because of the touch deprivation. Like Kristen said, there's other ways to address this. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is going to be the last entry. The subject line is spirituality and trusting my intuition versus being Delulu over my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> I think this is a great subject line that really (laughs) speaks for the the time (laughs) okay hi Kristen and Alex just thought just the thought of y'all reading this makes me over the moon excited I love you both so much and have been listening since day one wow I love you thanks for staying around thanks for sticking with us thank you anyway so I will try and keep this short but I'm a yapper so I don't know how that will go (laughs) welcome to the likewise yapper podcast About two years ago, I reconnected with my high school sweetheart. We dated for two years in high school. At first, it was a friendly thing, and we would get coffee every few weeks and would just chat. We would spend like five, six hours at the coffee shop sometimes. Things progressed, and we got more intimate. We both agreed to take it slow in the relationship front of our relationship, but both saw the potential in us and wanted to explore that. In June 2023, we made it official and started dating. Things were really, really great when they were great, but bad when they were bad. 
We're both very independent people and liked to be this way and do our own thing most of the time and hang out one or two days a week, depending on our schedules. However, he would also only text me like literally to make plans. So also once a week that bothered me. I'm someone with an anxious attachment style and aware of it. I work on it and have honestly gotten so much better. He is avoidant and knows this. When I bring up anything about how I feel, mostly just to get some reassurance, he would take offense and feel criticized despite my efforts to make it clear that I love him and I mostly just needed a little more reassurance. Anyway, this disagreement would come up a lot. We never argued or got mean with each other, but he would pull back. I would spiral and I'm sure you get the picture. Oh, this is just like the classic tale of an anxious attachment and an avoidant attachment. We had this, I mean, the entry just earlier yeah. talked about this. That's the tug and pull. They tend to attract each other. Long story short, we broke up on Friday. He thinks we just aren't a good match due to the dis- to this disagreement, and I openly told him I disagree and know we both could do better for ourselves and each other. But I didn't beg or even ask for ask for any other way. I let him walk away knowing he's making a huge mistake. I was very sad that day, but since then, I'm not. I feel a lot of peace, but the universe keeps throwing him and our relationship in my face. Some examples. I got a fortune with my Chinese food. It said, don't trust that others know better than you. Our angel number we always see together, 444, is everywhere. I see his name everywhere and overall just have have had this overwhelming sense of peace in what happened and I feel like I know I'm right and he'll come back. It sounds delusional, I know, but I'm very in touch with my spirituality and this is more than that. The biggest thing is I got a sign from the universe that I specifically asked for. I asked for one thing, if I should stay and fight and another, if I should walk away. I got my stay sign so clearly, but a little different. I asked for strawberry lime and I got strawberry lemon so clearly. I didn't know what to do with that in the beginning, but it, but it since feels right to just give this space and wait for him to come back. But I'm not sure what to do because I don't want to be waiting around for someone. And to add, I'm moving away from medical school in August, so it's not like we have forever. Any advice for trusting my gut, listening to the universe versus being Delulu over my ex? Have you guys ever had difficulty with different attachment styles or been an anxious attached attachment yourself how do I heal and do what's best I need some advice from the big sisters I never got to have please and thanks please keep anonymous thanks again for everything y'all I adore you and your energy Mm. best anonymous strawberry lime you asked for strawberry lime you got strawberry lemon that's not strawberry lime I'm just saying yeah I think the fact that you said like at first you were like when the breakup was happening you, you didn't resist it and you like let him walk away knowing and then like a few days later, whatever, you felt fine. That's literally what anxious attachment is. In the breakup, you're freaking out because you're 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 being, you know, abandoned and they're leaving you and you're like, oh, I need to I need to dig my claws into this so deep. But then once they walked away, you were like, Oh, like it was just that moment of feeling that abandonment. So I think that's also very telling. You waiting for them to come back, like that's just a that's just like a game that only you're playing with yourself I think like I I I get you I mean you know you listen to the pod like we are very spiritual people here but I think there comes a point of honesty with yourself with like what the universe is also just quite literally allowing to play out him breaking up you having a sense of being okay with it even though you're like I know he's gonna come back because all these signs and my gut and all this I'm not you know necessarily discrediting that because shit he fucking might who knows but right now just trust what's our like you're looking for these signs which I you know I get that I do that shit too but like also look at literally what happened you're broken up and you feel okay with it right (laughs) I think there's a reason why you're feeling this sense of peace with the breakup like Kristen said almost take all of the other aspects out of it look at it for what it was the breakup and trust your the peace in your gut for that like the universe is giving you that peace in your gut because you guys broke up and maybe that should be your tell that you guys need to have this time apart I wouldn't go in like 
one step further because like Kristen said, that's just a game you're playing in your in your head. Yeah. Going one step further and almost like fabricating the reason behind the the breakup. Yeah. Like you have a good gut feeling and you're almost like dishonoring it. Yeah. I exactly. Think, yeah, you have like two things in front of you right now. Your gut that's telling you what's up because guts be doing that. And then the part of you that still wants to play this game of he's going to come back. And that is your anxious attachment style. And like you're preaching to the choir. Like I, I get it. Right. But I think you should go with the one that's coming easier, mm-hmm. which is the gut feeling. Because gut feelings won't be challenged. They won't be misinterpreted and they're they're not a sense of calm can't really be misinterpreted like Mm -hmm. that's just not how calmness works like a false sense of calm rarely happens yeah you know like as much even think about when you're anxious and you're like i'm okay i'm okay and you have to talk yourself down like you know that even feels fraudulent you're just doing it because you know it's what you should be doing but this like true sense of calm you're feeling is just so telling to me yep exactly now warning and I'm sure you already know this because it seems like you're like super in tune with the types of attachment styles him being an avoidant there might be a point where he's like it's gonna all hit him and the him crawling back thing might happen per the avoidant like pattern that every avoidant does you should know like please know or anybody else listening in a, a similar situation that the cycle is just going to start again. He's going to come back because his avoidance was like, oh shit, I fucked up. And then he's going to be super good. Like you said, it's really good when it's good and it's bad when it's bad. He's going to be super good. And you're going to think like, oh my God, we're good. And we're like, he's changed we're changed, and all this. He realized. And then that's going to make your anxious come forward and be like, he wants me again. I'm wanted. I'm needed. Dive yourself back into his orbit. Freak him out nothing wrong with you, but this is just the dynamic here. Freak the avoidant out. Oh my God, they love me so much. It's freaking me out. I'm going to run away again. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be left heartbroken. You're going to be like, what do I do? I'm abandoned again, but I'm going to leave him. He'll come back and then he probably fucking will. And that's, that is what people do. That's why it's like, I wish it was on our birth certificate, our fucking attachment (laughs) styles. The power of just being aware of which one you are is so important one but like it can really help you avoid textbook patterns that it that is the classic story of the avoidant and the anxious attachment styles um so yeah like just keep that in mind if he does come back i i feel shitty saying this like spiritual girly girly to spiritual girly if he comes back it's not it's not because of the cosmos. It's it's because he's an avoidant and you're an attachment and you guys fuel each other's poison. Like Right. There's a there know? comes a point where you have to separate the like the spirituality from the actual the like the, your your mental health and the the actual facts of the situation. Yeah. Because then you're just you're letting your spirituality take control and it's you know you're getting lost in it but if you use it in a healthy way to guide you and for you to trust yourself and be honest with yourself that's when it's a power yeah that's when you could really use it to to guide you yeah I I relate to this entry a lot I mean that's even if I lived in the same town as Tanner, I think this is a dance that we would probably be doing after our breakup. I think I think the universe moved my ass to New York during our relationship knowing, all right, she needs to be as far away as possible or else we would have been doing the same tango. Totally. He's an avoidant. I'm an anxious. And even though he did the worst that he fucking cheated, it hurt so bad. I was there. Were, I'll be the first to say there were still parts throughout my healing where I was like, you seeked him, right? I was like, shit, like he is hurting. Like this is super dark for him. I should be there. Da, da. And then I was like, whoa, bitch, like recognize. Cause I'm like, I said, that's why people should be aware of their styles. Like I was able to detach from that and be like, this is just a pattern. This isn't the cosmos. Da, da, da. This is just a pattern of brain chemicals fucking happening, firing off of my brain. This is science. This is literally <laughs> science. And then, now like now it's 
I don't want anything to do with that person. Right. But like, and, but that proves that like time, time heals. It yeah. really is a big and fucking consistency and yep. honoring yourself and knowing the pattern might be coming back around that loop, but like turn away from it. Yeah. Like better yourself, honor yourself, honor the bigger picture here and, ter- and, and build that resiliency to know, Hey, I see this temptation. I see this pattern I've been in before with this person, but it's not for me. It's expired. Zoom out. The universe had you guys break up. If it was meant like meant to be, then it wouldn't have been a problem in the first place. Like you wouldn't be breaking up in the first place. Like, you know that about the universe, dude. Like the universe doesn't play games. It's not testing you. It's not, let me throw this wrench in their relationship to see if they come out on top. Like you guys broke up. And if you trust your gut and the peace in your gut after this breakup, the universe did it for a reason because you guys aren't meant to be together right now. Yeah. And uh, last point, I'm sorry, I just keep looking back at the entry because I want to make sure I hit everything. This is a great entry. Some of the examples you're seeing, like the universe throwing all these signs in your face. I had this too. Mm. Trust me. I know you guys don't know Tanner's real name, but there's a part of his name that is like such a common term that you will see out on like yeah cars and buildings and advertisements but it's an uncommon name a super uncommon name but like i see so it's easy to attribute it to to him right but so like when i would see those things oh my god or like uh i would see like the digits of his birthday all the fucking time and like i used to see those a lot while we were dating so i was like oh my god what's Am I the supposed universe to be together doing? i will admit I, I have to take pride in this i never have once thought, do we need to get back together? Mm. But it was more of that frustrating feeling of like, why is the universe throwing this kind of in my face right now? Right. You can, you can argue that's just law of attraction. That's where an energy cord needs to be snipped. You know, like it's just cause you know, the, give yourself some grace. Like your breakup's still relatively fresh. It's cause the, it's, it's still in your head. So like, I even remember back when I was car shopping and I was looking at certain cars, I kept seeing that car on the street because I was thinking about that car. Those things are always there is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You're just seeing them because you're constantly thinking about the old memories of seeing 444 with him. Um, you know, just all the little things you said. You gave a few examples, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, those don't, those aren't always like the signs. It's, it's just law of attraction too. I, I don't know. I, I know that might feel shitty because I've been in the point where like, I really do, I really have found myself like over investing in my spirituality and like it sometimes takes you out of reality Yeah, and there's, it's, it's really about finding that balance. And I don't, I hope that doesn't disrespect anybody's beliefs out here. That's truly just mine. So please take it with a grain of salt, but yeah, it's, it's, it's common to get into, but balance yourself. I think at the end of the day, we can all agree. That's also the root of spirituality is like take what you need and release what you don't need and just like come back to center, slow down. Don't overanalyze. Like that's the opposite of what she wants you to do. The universe is she. God bless. Very well said. Thank you. That Coca-Cola got me going. Yeah. (laughs) My brain's going crazy. I like see every dimension right now. (laughs) You are the universe. (laughs) In a Miami jersey. This is what she wears. It is. With her little Coca-Cola. She's like, boop. Yeah. Throw this at you. Oh, that's a cute idea for a photo shoot. Like, oh, like God is a woman. Yeah. She's good. She's really good. She really. That's happened to us twice this week. We've had an idea for like a cool photo shoot. And and it's shit that Ariana Ariana did that. (laughs) (laughs) We are her. She is us. We are one. God is a woman. Oh, I could belt that song on the top of my lungs yeah it's her whistle tones you got it you nailed it i don't know i don't know guys just figure out what your attachment style is <laughs> i'm gonna leave let's leave you guys with that i challenge you in the next duel to figure out what your attachment style is and be honest with yourself if the person you're with is triggering that or not Okay, for Patreon, we have done a couple vlogs these past couple weeks. So if you're on our Patreon, go check them out. And if you're not, if you don't know, 
Every Friday, we release an extra episode on our Patreon, and we have a few tiers that you can choose from audio, visual, and we also do a hella Zoom call every week for our hella tier. Yeah, and the, the last video we did was really fun. Um, we, food we, review. We did a food <laughs> review, but we meant to go to a certain restaurant, and the wait was two hours. The wait was literally two hours, so we were like on our feet to find a new place. It's a really good video. It was an amazing restaurant. Uh, we, we get a lot of questions of you guys saying like, oh, I'm coming to New York or I'm moving to New York. What are your favorite restaurants, bars, whatever? So we we're kind of thinking of maybe starting here and there, just this kind of review series to not only get our asses in new restaurants and <laughs> right. try new places, but like give you guys some input on, I don't know, something that we get asked a lot. So it's linked down below as always, or you can go to patreon.com slash advice podcast to check out all the tiers and see which one you like. Or not, you can stick here with us here on audio and YouTube. We're here every week, as you guys know. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Turn on notifications because YouTube be not sending notifications if you don't turn on that little bell. It's so annoying, but it's that's why it's there. If you're listening on Apple Music or Spotify, make sure you leave revar, revar, <laughs> a revar for us, a review, and uh, five stars. And for Patreon for next week's episode, we're going to go back to the set here general advice and if say you wrote in you didn't get in through the email we have our own dms there you guys can send in anything let us know if you want to be anonymous or whatever anything share what you're going through something you need help with introduce yourself if you're new whatever you guys want to do (laughs) all right guys have a good week all right we'll talk to you guys next week love Love you you. Bye. bye